chapter 12, part 4. In this part, I want to talk about the conductive segment. The conductive segment of the neuron is the length of the axon which the action potential can propagate it. If you remember from the last part, uh, we, when we want to talk about the neuron in neurophysiology, the cell body and the dendrites are called a receptive segment. The axon hillock is called initial segment. The axon is called conductive segment. And the axon terminal is called transmissive segment. I hope you remember from last time that this um, cell body and dendrite can receive information from the other neuron. Then this information are called graded potential and make some changes in the polarity of cell membrane in this part. All of the graded potential are added together in initial segment. If we reach the threshold level in this part, we have the action potential. If we re don't reach the threshold level, then we don't have any action potential. Now, imagine that we reach the threshold level in initial segment, and now the action potential is created, and it wants to propagate in the length of our axon. In the conductive segment, the action potential has two different steps. The first step is called depolarization, and the second one is called repolarization. Depolarization means gaining of positive charges. The positive charge here is sodium ion. When sodium ion come into our cell through the voltage-gated sodium channel, inside the cell become more positive. This stage is called depolarization. The next step is called repolarization. Repolarization means when the positive ion leave our cell and inside the cell become more negative. Repolarization is due to exist or outflow of potassium ion from the potassium voltage-gated channels. Then, after that, we have the other step, which we call it hyperpolarization, and I will talk about it in the next slide. Action potential is propagated in all parts of the axon uh, until it reached a synaptic knob. Voltage-gated channel open and close in the sarcolima Sorry, in the axolima uh, of our axon. Propagation is called the nerve signal here. In this slide, you can see these three phases, depolarization, repolarization, and hyperpolarization. Here you can see the phase of one, which is the resting membrane potential. During resting membrane potential, our neuron is at rest. We don't have any change in the polarity of our cell membrane. Out of the cell is positive and inside the cell is negative. And the difference between outside and inside is negative 70 millivolt, as you see, uh, it's negative 70 millivolt, as you see in this picture. Um, then we want to talk about the action potential. The range of our um, voltage is from negative 70 to positive 30 millivolt. In the negative 70, we have resting membrane potential. And after that, you see that in this part, we have the stimulation. The stimulation come to our neuron and open the channels uh, in the receptive segment. And the ions can come inside. We have graded potential, and you know that all of these graded potential should add with each other um, in the initial segment. And then if we reach the threshold level, let me have the other color. When we reach the threshold level, which is minus 55, then the action potential is generated. The first phase of action potential is called depolarization. As you see, the voltage goes up. 
and it reached positive 30. This is the maximum and the spike of our action potential. After that, all the sodium channels become closed and potassium channels become open. And inside the cell become more negative due to existing potassium ion from our cell. And you see the next step, which we call it repolarization. Repolarization take place until we reach minus 70 millivolt, as you see in this picture. But you see that our graph goes a little downer than the resting membrane potential. This step, which the voltage come down, is called hyperpolarization. Here you can see the hyperpolarization. It means that during this phase, our inside the cell become more and more negative, more negative than minus 70. Sometimes we reach a negative 95 in this part. And after that, our sodium potassium ATPase start to work and bring the voltage to the rest again. And here you see that again, we are in resting membrane potential. These are the different steps which we have for action potential. And I will explain these parts in the next slide more for you. In this slide, you can see the generation of action potential. In the first step, we are in resting membrane potential and the voltage, as you see in this picture, is uh, negative 70 millivolts. In the next step, as you see here, sodium ion flow within the cytosol into the region from adjacent area. The membrane potential become more positive, moving away from negative 70 millivolt. Voltage gated sodium channels become open and more and more sodium ion come to our cell. And as you see here, we can reach the threshold level. In the next step, you see that when we reach the threshold level in our initial segment, which is negative 55 millivolt, then all sodium channels become open and sodium ion can come to our cell. And inside the cell become more and more positive. This step is called depolarization. When we reach the maximum positivity, which is positive 30 millivolt, sodium channel become closed and become inactive. And after that, we have the next step, which we call it repolarization. In this picture, uh, you can see depolarization. As you see here, uh, during resting membrane potential, we in negative 70 millivolt. Here you can see the site of a stimulation, a stimulation come to our uh, neuron and we reach the threshold level which is negative 55 millivolt and after that the sodium channels become open and sodium ion come to our cell. This part is called depolarization. After that we have repolarization. During repolarization, the sodium channels are closed and only we have opening of potassium channel. And you see that the potassium ion can leave our cell and inside the cell become more and more negative. And in this picture, you see that the potential come down here the voltage of the cell come down and it become more negative and negative sometimes the negativity of our cell become more and more and as you see in this part we have hyperpolarization our cell become more negative than resting membrane potential And after hyperpolarization, our sodium potassium uh, ATPase pump starts to work 
and bring everything back to its normal or resting membrane potential as you see in this picture. And all of these steps repeat and repeat many times in the length of our axon. In this picture, you can see repolarization. Uh, the repolarization happens when our sodium channels become closed completely and potassium channel, which is here, become open. And potassium ion can leave our cell and inside the cell become more and more negative, as you see here. This step is called repolarization. After repolarization, I told you that we have a very short step, which we call it hyperpolarization. Inside our cell become more negative than negative 70 millivolt. And then, as you see in the next picture, the sodium potassium ATPase start to work. Use ATP here. and bring back our uh, membrane to resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential means that out of our cell again is positive and inside the cell is negative. In this picture, you can see all the events which happen during action potential. In the first step, uh, this is Potential and our potential is negative 70 millivolt. In the second step, uh, as you see here, we have different graded potential which come to our neuron and bring our potential membrane potential to negative 55 millivolt, as you see here, which we call it threshold level. Then we have a step three, which uh, we have depolarization. All sodium channels become open. Sodium ion come to our cell and inside the cell, as you see, become more and more and more positive. When we reach the maximum positivity, all the sodium channels become closed and potassium ion leave our cell and make our cell become more and more negative. Again, we reach negative 70 millivolt and at this part, and then we have hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization means that the amount of uh, potassium which leave our cell is more than normal. So uh, as you see here, uh, inside the cell become more and more negative, and then by working of sodium potassium ATPase pump, our uh, action potential graph reach to its normal point. Again, in these pictures, uh, you can see all the events which happen. During a resting phase, um, our sodium channel and potassium channel, both of them are closed and they prevent movement of this ion. Out of the cell is positive and inside the cell is negative. When we have a stimulation to our cell, we have depolarization phase. You see that the sodium channel become open, sodium ion in come inside the cell and inside the cell become positive. When we reach positive 30, then the sodium channels become closed and potassium channel become open and potassium ion come out of the cell and inside the cell again become more and more negative. And here you can see the depolarization phase. And then again, both of our uh, channels become closed. Sodium potassium ATPase pump start to work and bring the ions back to their normal places. You need to know that the action potential is all or none law. As sodium ion move into the cell, inside the cell become positive, and it repeat in all parts of our axon, in the length of our axon. Nerve impulse all look the same. Um, it, it, does, it means that mm, all of them have the same strength. Some of them are not too big, and some of them are not too small. This is the meaning of all one 
law. All of them are called nerve signals and they are propagated like each other in the human body. In the conductive segment, we have a period of time which we call it a refractory period. The refractory period is a brief time period after the action potential has been initiated um, and that part of our axon cannot make and generate the other action potential. So the refractory period means that we have a period of time immediately after a sort of action potential which is impossible or very difficult to have the other action potential. We can divide our refractory period in two different periods. One of them is called absolute and the other one is called a relative refractory period. The absolute refractory period lasts about one millisecond. No stimuli can initiate another action potential. All the sodium channels are open and then they become inactive. Uh, it wants to become in, uh, sure that the propagation goes toward the synaptic knob and it doesn't happen in the reverse direction. The relative refractory period which happen after absolute refractory period is the uh, time which the other action potential is possible but we need a very very strong stimulation the common stimulations or the weak stimulation cannot make the action potential in this part in this uh, period of time some potassium channels are still open and our cell wants to go to hyperpolarization uh, and after that it wants to go back to uh, resting membrane potential picture you can see the refractory period. As you see here, the refractory period is divided to absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. As you see in this picture, the absolute refractory period happen at the time of um, generation of action potential. You see that in this part we have a stimulation. When we have a stimulation, all the graded potentials are added together. Then we reach the threshold level depolarization take place. During depolarization we have absolute refractory period. After that we have the other part which we call it repolarization. You see that during a step four or repolarization our absolute refractory period continues. So during this time we cannot have the other stimulation and the other action potential. But in step five and six, five, sorry, which we call it relative refractory period, we can have the other action potential if the stimulation is very, very strong. During step five, we have hyperpolarization. At the time of hyperpolarization, some of the potassium channels are open and potassium move across the membrane. And after that, we have step six, which is the resting membrane potential. And when we reach the resting membrane potential, the other action potential can easily uh, be created. In this picture, you can see the receptive segment, the dendrites and cell body, which receive graded potential. They add all the graded potential in the initial segment. And um, here, uh, it's like the gun. If uh, we make enough pressure on the trigger of the gun, we have shooting. If we don't make enough pressure on the trigger, we don't have shooting. If we reach the threshold level in the axon hillock or initial segment, the action potential is created in the length of our axon. And we don't reach the a threshold level, we don't have any action potential. In this picture, you can see the direction of action potential. First, you need to know that our direction is only unidirectional. We don't have the opposite direction for our action potential. Then you see that when the first part of our axon become depolarized, inside the cell become positive and outside is negative. 
then this part become repolarized and the adjacent part become depolarized. Then the repolarized portion go to resting phase, the depolarized portion go to repolarization, and the next part become depolarized. This is the meaning of propagation of action potential in one direction. We have two types of propagation of action potential. One type is called continuous conduction and the other type is called saltatory conduction. The continuous conduction occur only on unmyelinated axon. I hope you remember that. The myelination uh, happen by the Schwann cell in the peripheral nervous system and by oligodendrocyte in central nervous system. Some of our axons are myelinated and some of our axons are non-myelinated or unmyelinated. And the conduction, uh, continuous conduction happen in unmyelinated axons. Charge open voltage gated channel which allow uh, charge to enter, which spread to adjacent region and open more channels uh, after that. Here uh, in this slide, you can see the action potential propagation in unlinated axon. In this picture, in this slide, when the action potential is created in the axon helot, it propagates in all parts of our axon. So first we have depolarization, then we have repolarization, after that hyperpolarization, and come back to the resting membrane potential. The action potential propagation is very slow in unmyelinated axon. In this picture, you can see the action potential propagation in myelinated neuron, which we call it saltatory conduction. In this picture, all of the um, sheets which you have around your axon is called Schwann cells. And between the Schwann cell, you can see uh, some uh, nodes, which we call them nodes of Ranvier or neurofibrin nodes. In myelinated axon, the action potential propagation doesn't happen in all length of the axon. In this type of neuron, the action potential is jumped only in Granvier's node. So this myelin sheet can make the, the insulation around the axon, so the action potential cannot happen in this part. And you have jumping of information in the length of axon. Because of that, the propagation of action potential is much more faster uh, in myelinated axon when we compare them with unmyelinated one. So the saltatory conduction occurs on myelinated axon. Action potential occur only at neurofibril nodes, which is where the axon is naked. The axon is bared. It doesn't have any myelin sheet around. And then the voltage-gated channels are concentrated there, and they can work there. After sodium ion enters at the node, it stores a rapid positive current down the inside of the axon, um, axon's myelinated region. And the current becomes weaker and weaker when it passes and moves in the length of our axon. In the next picture, you can see the saltatory conduction. As you see here, the action potential from this node can jump to the other node because the myelin sheet can make insulation around the axon and it doesn't let sodium ion to come inside and potassium ion to go out. The only part we, where we can have the exchange of ion happen in this Ranvier node. So the action potential can jump in the nodes of Ranvier and it can move faster and faster uh, in myelinated axons. 
in this picture, you can see propagation of action potential in unmyelinated axon, which we call it continuous conduction. In the continuous conduction, all parts of axon can um, contain uh, the channels, voltage-gated channels for sodium and potassium ion. So in all parts, we have depolarization, repolarization, and hyperpolarization. And the action potential propagate in all length of our axon. In this picture, you can see the propagation of action potential in uh, the myelinated axon. Here you can see the Schwann cell. You see that in the places where we have Schwann cell, we don't have any sodium potassium channels. Only the voltage-gated channels are located in the places where we don't have any Schwann cell around. And in this type of axon, we have jumping of information from one node to the other one. I stop here and I will talk about the transmissive segment in the next video.